Hey guys, and welcome back to the Ether Hub. I'm Cybin bringing you more Magic the Gathering lore. As I was taking a look at some of the most terrifying and disturbing creatures in Magic the Gathering history, there's one that just seems to jump out that can't really be ignored. Quite literally, you can't miss these monsters. They're behemoths. Not so much the creature type of a tribe in Magic the Gathering, but a keyword description of beasts so large and massive that their very steps can spell doom for any unprepared traveler or planeswalker. These are giants of the multiverse, fierce, strong, forces of nature that cause even the bravest hunters to quiver in fear. While behemoths are more often than not simply tied to the beast creature type, they're close cousins to the leviathan, which does appear in card text as a supported creature type. Leviathans are the aquatic variant of behemoths, the giants of the sea, capable of swallowing boats and even entire islands into their gaping maws. Both of these types of monsters in MTG are making a resurgence in the community and not just with Timmy's, those players enthralled by large, impressive size cards. No, they're back in the spotlight because a new set announced for MTG puts them front and center. Today, let's discuss and answer the question, what will happen on Ikoria Lair of Behemoths? Ikoria is a new plane in the MTG multiverse, one that homes some of the largest creatures known to players. With the average low cost of behemoths and leviathans being around 4 mana, it's easy to see how this set will sport some of the biggest creature cards, on average, that we've ever seen. With that, we can expect some decent ramp or other ways to cheat big creatures out early, but that's more of a mechanical speculation, yet one I feel comfortable making seeing how Ikoria, well, it's literally the lair of behemoths. Outside of that, all we really know is that it's a monster plane, so maybe a monster hunter vibe, with human characters competing to take down the most impressive game. We also know that we can, quote, make our own monsters with one of the craziest mechanics in MTG. So I'm taking from that, we'll have like some strange fusion or level up mechanic to make new monsters during a game. Think Brisella and that fusion mechanic from Eldritch Moon. So a lot of exciting things to look forward to there from a mechanic standpoint. But here we're concerned with the story first and foremost. What's the possible lore of Ikoria? Let me break down what I think could be some plot points for us to go through while on this new, terrifying plane. When I think of behemoths and big game hunting, one planeswalker in particular jumps right out to me. Garrick Wildspeaker. Garrick was once a proud hunter of the multiverse, traveling from world to world, taking on some of the most impressive prey you would ever see. In fact, he was tracking a giant Baleth on the planet of Chandralar when he encountered Liliana Vess and was cursed by her chain veil, in a sense changing his character's direction and storyline forever. Since that time, Garrick's character changed from what was a big game hunter to just being plain old crazy. He was always an aggressive character, but now rather than hunting monsters, he hunts planeswalkers. That's where he stayed for a very long time until our adventure in Throne of Eldraine, when he was finally purged from all of his various curses and blights, and we got the return of classic Garrick. Now, Garrick has been cursed and not himself for several years, player time, and that's a long time to not hunt anything big. I can think of no better return for Garrick than hunting on Ikoria, a plane full of monsters. We got loads of stories of Garrick infected by the Chain Veil and almost none before then. We have a lot of exploring to do with uncorrupted Garrick and his character, where it can be developed and how it can be presented to the player base. On a world like Ikoria, I wouldn't be shocked if there was some massive plane-wide hunting competition where tribes fought for the biggest prey, and we follow Garrick around as he tracks some mythical beast. Just a fun, one-off story on a unique plane, no massive multiversal threats, no evil villain to thwart, maybe some cheeky rivals to best, but keep this all a self-contained Ikoria-specific story about a hunting tournament. It would certainly be a different but very flavorful direction. More likely though, if the writers feel like putting a little more narrative weight to the punch into the story of Ikoria, they could include a mission for Garrick. 
When we last saw this planeswalker on Eldraine, he was pledging his service to the Kenrith family, and to the young planeswalkers who saved his life and freed him from the Chainvale's curse, the twins Will and Rowan Kenrith. Their sparks ignited while on an adventure with Garrick, and he promised to track them and keep them safe, no matter where they were. Maybe this story on Ikoria can provide more backstory for Will and Rowan, while being the next chapter in Garrick's own tale. Maybe Ikoria is the first plane Will and Rowan jump to after their sparks ignite. Lost, terrified, and without any training in the plane's walking ways, Garrick must find the youngsters before a massive monster ends them and Garrick fails his promise. I like this theory a lot more because it follows the growth of multiple characters, not just Garrick and possibly new ones. But honestly, both seem very plausible on a plane like Ikoria. Another character I think could be featured and may even drive us to Ikoria is a planeswalker with a name very similar to the plane itself, Kiora. Now, their names being almost impossibly similar isn't the only reason I think she'll be involved in the plane story. The last card we saw Kiora on was in War of the Spark, when she was forced to fight the eternal armies of Bolas with some Simic-made monsters on the plane of Ravnica during the War of the Spark. Her card's title? Behemoth Beckoner. We know that Kiora as a character loves big stompy monsters, just like me. She's really the Timmy of the Planeswalker cast. She loves summoning and controlling the largest leviathans and beasts of any one particular plane, traveling the multiverse in search of the largest beings specifically to ever grow underwater. Initially, her motivation to find these monstrosities was to help her home of Zendikar. No, she's not a native of Ikoria. Kiora from Ikoria would have been a little too obvious. No, she's from Zendikar, a plane threatened by the Eldrazi Titans. As the threat to her home was big, she needed a big weapon, and the seas held just that. She went to multiple planes to find massive creatures to fight the Eldrazi with, which leads me to think that she could show up on a world full of big monsters. Now there is a caveat, the Eldrazi on Zendikar are defeated, and Kiora knows that. Kiora saw Ulamog and Kozilek fall. In fact, she almost cost the Gatewatch their chance to defeat them for good. She accidentally got ahead of herself in wanting to defend Zendikar. She just wanted the Eldrazi to leave at any cost. She didn't think they could be killed, so she almost blew everything. And once she knew she fudged up, she sort of just left, not saying a word, just planes walking off into the sunset. A real downer for a character I personally love, but still her story is nowhere near over yet. However, if the Eldrazi are dead, why would Kiora need to find more massive beasts on Ikoria? Maybe in fighting Nicol Bolas, Kiora discovers that the Eldrazi aren't the only threats facing Zendikar. She'll go to great lengths to fill the seas of her home with giant defenders waiting for the next shoe to drop. She won't be reactive this time, but proactive. I know it's kinda weak, but it's pretty much all I have to go off of. Now I mentioned earlier that I think Kiora may be the one to jump us to Ikoria. Why do I think that? Because she's the only character I can think of that has a connection between Theros and a possible relationship with Ikoria with this whole monster theme. Kiora traveled to Theros back in the block's original story and was mistaken for the god of the seas, Thassa, who takes the form of a merfolk. Kiora actually fought with Thassa, a god, and got pummeled. But Kiora didn't pick this fight to win. During the fight, she grabbed the god's enchanted bident and planeswalked away. Thassa isn't aware of planeswalkers and thus didn't know that could happen. So yeah, Kiora stole a weapon from a god on Theros. The Bident allows her to control those sea monsters and the seas themselves, even on other planes. So it's the device that she'll use on Ikoria to get those monsters on her side. But yeah, she's the only character I can see that can logically get us from Theros Beyond Death to Ikoria Lair of Behemoths. I also wanted to throw out my craziest idea for Ikoria. What if Kiora is the active villain of this set? I know she's often betrayed as a hero, sort of a selfish one that will succeed at any cost, but still does it for the right reasons. 
Maybe with her massive failure and shunning from the Battle of Zendikar, Kiora gets lost in her own thoughts and doubts and uses the Bident of Thassa to make insane leviathans and behemoths on Ikoria. Maybe her time with the Simic Combine and seeing their creations on Ravnica inspires her to stop looking for the biggest monsters and just go out and make her own. That would play into this whole making monsters mechanic mentioned, but Kiora being pissed and full of doubt is a shabby way to shoehorn a character into being evil. But still, I think this idea holds a lot of water. Ha. <laughs> Kiora pun. There isn't a lot of information out right now on Ikoria, and it's still a ways off, but I feel really strongly about the predictions I've made, and I want to know what you think in the comment section below. Do you think any of these are strong predictions, and what are some of your own theories for Ikoria? More so, what are you looking to see from this new plane? Let me know that in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave it a like, subscribe, and of course, hit that notification bell so you never miss out on our latest videos. As always guys, thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, see ya!